Welcome back to another video. So this one is going to be, we're going to go into free trades, free different uh, accounts. I'm ignoring the retirement one. So we're just going to focus on the basic account, the ISA account and the plus account to help you understand them just a little bit more and maybe decide which one you want. So I'm not sponsored by free trade uh, and this isn't financial advice. Do your own research uh, as always. But uh, this is my learnings, my understandings. Could be wrong, but let's put it out there. So um, yeah, I'm gonna show you the desktop. We're gonna run through um, a couple of different bits um, and uh, hopefully that helps you decide which account is the right one for you. So um, you've got the general investment account, which is just a basic buying shares, um, nothing complicated to it. Um, all I will say is, as I would very much assume all of you are, within the UK, uh, basically any uh, investments done in a basic account this isn't just free trade this is probably of most um, that isn't within an ISA you are liable for tax on which people don't always realize so um, how that works roughly uh, I had a chat with my accountant about it because it was a concern of mine and so this could be wrong but this is roughly what I uh, I took from the conversation um, that basically if you invest a thousand pounds into the likes of say Apple and that turns into fifteen hundred pounds that five hundred pounds is the bit that you should uh, incur the tax on and uh, you have an allowance a bit like if you're employed and under PAYE you can earn so much before you start paying tax on the bit above that um, it's about it's roughly the same with shares so it was I could, I'll be wrong on this figure but it's around 12,000 something uh, I think it was and basically so you can have 12,000 pounds worth of gains and then everything thereafter would be subject to tax so hope that clears that up so uh, most of my amount is is in a ISA which I can show you now um, so I use free trades ISA account the only thing that's in the basic account is some free shares that I'd uh, I'd gotten. Um, so yeah, basically I use the ISA. So we will come back to that in a moment. So um, within the ISA, you can buy, sell, whatever, um, and uh, there's no tax. You can put only twenty thousand pound in a year, as with any ISA. If you had an ISA savings account with your bank, it would be the same principle. So you can't have, to my knowledge, more than one ISA. Um, so yeah, I chose to go down the ISA route. Uh, therefore, I don't inter incur any tax on my gains, thankfully, because we've gained quite a bit this year. Um, so yeah. Now, the ISA account does cost £3 a month. And you don't have access to every single share, but I haven't really found any shares that I've wanted that aren't included. Um, so for three pound a month, that just covers like their management sort of things of the whole ISA and their admin costs. Um, and really, once you get started investing and putting money in regular, the three pound is nothing. Um, so yeah, so looking at the plus account, which is mainly what we're going to focus on today, because there's a few things in here that uh, people are unsure of or maybe don't know what they mean. So. Um, to start with, it's nine ninety nine a month. Um, it's still an ISA, so they include that three pound fee within it, I believe. Um, so effectively, what we're talking about is six pound ninety nine more. And for that, you get three percent on your interest on your cash balance. So anything that's uninvested. So if I just show you on my account right now, of that thirty six thousand, we have. 320 pounds that is not invested in anything so I would be getting 3% interest paid monthly um, on that amount just for having it sat in there so uh, that is quite nice and better than what a bank will give you uh, then we've got the access to more stocks so you start to gain access to smaller cap uh, stocks smaller cap we mean um, you know something like Tesla is 800 billion um, and you start to get access to some of these smaller companies that might be one two three billion uh, total you know so smaller stocks that you know just more if there's something there that you want 
I mean, for me, as I said, I haven't run into anything yet that isn't available on the normal ISA. So if there was, I, I probably would upgrade. Um, I have nothing against uh, this new account. I just haven't found any uh, any stocks that I need in there at the minute. And uh, we'll talk about this now. The, it gives you two other options as far as buying and selling shares. Um, and if you're new to invest in, you might not understand what these are. So we're gonna dive into them. We've got limit orders and stop losses. So if you're unsure what they are or how to use them, I can't demonstrate it because I've not upgraded to plus at the moment. Um, if I do in the future, I'll do another video on it. But basically, a limit order is saying, I want to buy this share at this price. So if, like today, Tesla's around like $850, um, you could say if Tesla drops to 845 I want to buy a hundred pounds worth or whatever um, whatever your amount but basically you can set an order that uh, will execute even when you're not on the app or whatever so you know someone like myself or I'm sure a lot of you uh, working and stuff like that the night before you can think well I want to buy some Tesla I would like to try get it at this price Therefore, if it dips at some point during that day uh, and you weren't looking at your phone, it will just execute that order. So if you're asking for 845, it could even execute it at 842, you know, uh, lower than what you've requested. Um, all depends on, you know, when that triggers, but uh, they shouldn't execute it above what you've asked for. So the, the cutoff point will be the 845, so it'll give you that or lower. Um, so yeah, basically, uh, that's what a limit order is. It's wanting to buy something at a set price. Obviously, if it doesn't drop below eight four five, then your your buy order won't be executed. So um, yeah, if you're trying to get that extra couple of dollars when you're entering a stock on a particular day, maybe of a larger amount, that would make a bigger difference. Um, then you can use that feature. So stop loss, which is the other one on here, uh, stop loss. Uh, it's in the name. It's stopping you making a loss. Now it doesn't stop stopping you making a loss for say, um, it's hard to say. So what you could do with the likes of Tesla, you might have bought a lot in at eight fifth, uh, $850. You can say if Tesla ever falls below $800, I wanna sell out the stock. So if you're someone that's concerned about a big dip in a stock, or a better example of that would be GameStop more recently. So a very risky move, um, a lot of people made. I didn't take part in that, but I, I very much enjoyed watching it from the sidelines. And uh, yeah, basically a lot of people sort of effectively gambled because GameStop isn't exactly a stock that you'd want to go long on. It's in the retail industry. You know, it's how many people go and buy an Xbox or a PlayStation and stuff from something like a game in the UK, you know? It's, um, in my opinion, a, a die-in business um, and won't be around for, for too much longer. But um, uh, if you had gone into that uh, craziness, you could have bought in at something like $90 and put a stop loss just to protect yourself from losing too much money. You could have put a stop loss at, say, $80. Then if it went all the way back down to $20 again, you know, you're not had missed it or wasn't watching your phone or whatever, it will just come down and bang, it will execute your stop loss uh, and sell out your position. So you can also use it in the reverse way as well, um, in the effect that you could go, um, you could have bought Tesla, say, at $850, and let's say, you know, later in the year it climbs up to $1,000, you could put your stop loss at uh, at 950 or something or higher or lower whatever um, and actually you know it, if it dips down at any point then it, it'll execute the uh, the the sale of that for you so uh, hopefully that clears up what that is if it doesn't then you know put some comments below um, I'm gonna get to this point in the video where I don't normally do this but shameless plug because the channel's been doing quite well actually uh, lately. Uh, if you hit the subscribe or like button, if any of this is helping you out, or the bell notification, uh, and you'll get noticed when I do a video. So um, yeah. So um, enjoy tax efficiency. So yeah, it's an ISA is included inside the Plus membership. Tax rule for ISA can change, and their benefits dependent on your circumstances. As I said, I'm not 
giving you financial advice but the information's here um, and here's just a little comparison to free trade the free version and free trade the plus version plus version so uh, yeah for 9.99 a month you get everything in the in the free plan and you get the access to FTSE small cap, uh, small cap stocks so smaller companies within the UK FTSE um, and you also get the S&P small cap 600s as well uh, as well as the AMOL shares so um, yeah here's a, a, a recap on the features um, and I must say you know, obviously we're seeing the limit orders, the stop losses, even more stops, 3% things which we covered. The priority customer service, on the basic, I have had to speak to customer service a few times with free trade on various different things. And um, I'm, I'm really impressed. Their customer service has been so on it. And I have used other brokers, I won't name and shame them here now. Um, but basically one other broker's terrible. It takes like three days to get a reply back from customer service when you have uh, you know, a considerable amount of your money invested. It's not really what you want um, to, to be waiting days uh, to, to get a reply. Whereas the free trade lot, I mean, I know they work like Monday to Friday, but they have picked up messages on Saturdays and Sundays. And if, if, if there's downtime on the app or something's not working, they're on it. They're, um, they send a message out to everyone, you know, we've got a few issues, but we're hoping to sort them out soon. So yeah, I'm, for that reason, I'm, I'm really into them. And uh, you know, I'll repeat again, I'm not sponsored by Free Trade. Um, but if they do want to sponsor me, you know, hit me up. Um, stocks and shares, ISA, curated stock collections. So yeah, hopefully that sort of clears it all up for you. I mean, check out the Free Trade website. They've got a pretty cool little uh, community section here where there's a forum and people chat about stocks or chat about things they'd like to see on the Free Trade app. And uh, yeah, they're still a growing uh, growing company. They're still bringing on new features, but I just love the simplicity of it. Um, and for a new investor, I, I really can't think of a, an app that I'd recommend more. You know, I've I brought a lot of people into investing and uh, this is where uh, I suggest they start. So yeah, hope that helps. Um, if I didn't cover anything or you still have questions, put them in the comments below. Um, I'm always cruising through them and stuff. And uh, yeah, you know, we'll go from there. So hope you enjoyed that. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, really helps the channel out. And I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.